And welcome into Track 'em Tigers this Saturday at noon on the SEC Network. Auburn welcomes in Tennessee. I'm your host, Jay Coulter, and as always, I'm joined by the coach, Ron Nelson. Coach, good to see you. Thank you, Jay. Good to be here. Yeah. What's going on over on the Plains? Auburn falling 23-9 to Mississippi State last week. Tennessee's no pushover this week. No, I knew it wouldn't be. Uh, you know, we these, uh, we probably played our worst football game, and uh, and totally. Uh, Jay, if you'd have told me that uh, Mississippi State's going to pass for 69 yards and rush for 300, I'd, I'd have said no way. And uh, it was just a combination of offense really, really looked pathetic the first half. I, I will give them credit. I thought the second half they came out mm -hmm. and they played much, much better. Uh, so it's just a, a situation where I probably jinxed myself. I talked about Ryan Davis being a real sure-handed uh, punt returner. He, uh, he has two muffs. He got one back. Uh, that gave Mississippi State their first touchdown, if you want to call it a touchdown. And, uh, but um, the, the little things that we have to do right to have a chance to win, we just didn't do Saturday. And uh, I, I st I'm still not going to give up on this team because I think the potential is there. Uh, but it's, it's time for them to come alive. And uh, I saw signs of that offensively in the second half. Um, defensively, um, they hurt us with, with some some different motion, and that I have never seen Mississippi State run. But it it was cross motion, and but coming back to that motion, and all it was going to do was give it, or they was going the quarterback was going to take. It was very very simple, and um, they had the numbers in the box, uh, and in their box, and, and we didn't. And uh, I I've never seen nobody run the football on Auburn like like they have, and. It's been, a, it's been a few years since that happened. Yeah. You know, you look at the performance against Washington. I mean, they, they lost on the last play to a, a really good LSU football team. I know they fell to Florida, but they're a good football team. I'm not sure Auburn could beat either one of those teams right now. Well, I mean, if we, if we played right now with the mindset we got, we probably wouldn't. But we're mm -hmm. going to get that back. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we're, we're, we haven't just got bad since the LSU game. We may have to make some improvement in some areas that we got to do. But... Uh, it's just not one person. It's, it's just not one side of out of the three areas of football. It's just not one of them. Uh, yes, the offense is struggling, but I, I think you're going to see them come out of it and uh, to the point where I, I'm not going to ever say that we're going to be a team that's going to score highly in big time, but we've got a chance to score if our defense plays up their capabilities and we'll have a chance to win. Yeah. Not to make any excuses f for the game, but really there are two questionable touchdown calls. Um, one where Mississippi State, I didn't think, got in the end zone. Booby Whitlow crossing the, the end zone, the, did he have control of the ball? I don't really think he did. So they almost wash out. But it was, a, like you said, it was a game of missed opportunities. I mean, it, the outcome could have been very different. Yeah, I mean, uh, the, the muff t uh, punt that set them up right before half, mm -hmm. to me that was, that was a turning point. Instead of going in 9-3, a 9-3 game and then – getting yourself refocused and, 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 and understanding what, what you need to do to try to win, now we're down 16-3 to three, uh, instead of 9-3. And, uh, you know, at first I thought he definitely scored. After I watched the replay and watched the slow motion, uh, when, when Thomas hit him, his back turned to the side and it never crossed. It was right on top of the goal line. But the ball's in front. Right. I just don't understand what the replay officials were looking at. Uh, on Booby's call, he'll learn from that. He's, he's a freshman. Uh, he was, it, that was one of them things that you don't never want to turn over, but it was an effort turnover. He was trying to get in the end zone. And if you go by stop and slot, you know, in a, in, a, in a situation where it's going clock frame, when he sticks the ball out, he has possession and, it, and it's crossing the plane. Was he looked like he was trying to change hands, maybe. But all of a sudden, I think their man came in and topped right when yeah. it crossed. So it was very close. Uh, you're never going to blame it on officiating or no. a question or call because that, that, that was not it, no. And the, and the rule for the official now is, I mean, when they look at a play, they've got to have enough evidence to, to overturn. And that's what I think the problem was. There wasn't enough evidence mm -hmm. and, uh, to overturn it. Because right. so, uh, a lot of people know. think whatever they call on the field really doesn't matter. It does matter what they call on the field it, if there's not enough evidence. Exactly. And, uh, and, and I think we learn that more and more as, 
is that sometimes you don't have all the best angles mm -hmm. to look at a particular play. But, um, you know, it was it's just, you know, right now things ain't going our way. Uh, uh, the Auburn fan base is disgruntled, I understand. The coaches are frustrated. The players are frustrated. Uh, it's just, hey, guy, this is the time that you got to circle the wagon. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and you got to, you know, there's not many of us, so we got to stick together, and then, and then hopefully some good things are going to happen before this season's end. Jay, be honest, the only thing that we've lost was the chance to, you know, to be conference champions. Uh, we probably wasn't going to get that anyway right. this year. Right. So uh, let's just let's just try to regroup and and end this thing and hope we play the last six games like we think we're capable of doing. Yeah, this week. I mean, you saying that this week is really dangerous because you look. We've got Tennessee, Ole Miss, Texas A and M. I mean, this thing can either come completely off the rails here in the next few days, or they can kind of right the ship and, like you said, we weren't going to win the SEC West this year anyway. I mean, mm -hmm. we, hope against hope. Right, like you said, everything else is still to play for. You still, you still can play for a, a nine-win season. You know, there there are a lot of things that you can. That a lot you of can, things, can and, you can, and you can and you could upset some folks and and make their season miserable. Yeah. Than than what it was, but Tennessee's a big ball game. Uh, number one, I do not pl like playing eleven o'clock games. Mm -hmm. Uh, and if and I, I I heard a commentary, uh, last week on the eleven o'clock game, they thought that if the person, the team on the road has the advantage in an 11 o'clock game. Number one, your crowd's not into it. They're not really woke up. You know, they hadn't had time to tailgate and get ready right. to, to go in the stadium. Uh, if you're on the road, you're just doing your normal new routine. You're just doing it early, earlier. Uh, Auburn don't ever, and Auburn's never seen the play good at 11 o'clock. No. Uh, Tennessee having a bye week. Uh, that concerns because I know Jeremy Pruitt probably went back to some fundamental things and, and they played, you know, some people think that in a, on a bye week that you're just going to really have like another spring training. Uh, I'll never forget Al Board just one time, and that was Auburn's mentality when he was there. He come in and he said, look, we're not, we just need to rest and get better. We need to heal up. And let's just execute against air and see if we can do that. And I think you're seeing more teams do that. So I'm, I'm sure Tennessee probably had a hard beginning of the week, but kind of let up and started putting the game plan in. So, but, uh, but like you said, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be a situation where this is where we need to turn it around. Yeah. How much at this point is psychological for Auburn? You know, I really wonder that. Uh, you know, we said last week, uh, you know, the importance of staying as a team. And uh, I read a great article, to, uh, matter of fact, I read it today, where the three captains, Ryan Davis and Deshaun Davis and uh, Jared Stidham, and, and they talked about, you know, they have to stay together to keep mm -hmm. that team staying together. Uh, I, I think that's very, very important to the point where that, uh, you know, Saturday night, there was, there was enough, thing, enough fingers to point at everybody. And uh, so that's when you got to regroup as a team and, and come together and just, like I said, if we can get a win under our belt and then, you know, go on to next week and then keep getting better. Um, I, I saw some positive things uh, on the offensive side of the ball the second half. And uh, it's, it's to a point where Auburn plays better when that Auburn plays with rhythm. Mm -hmm. uh, if they can get first downs and get things going. Uh, it's, it's when they have the three and outs and they don't, that's when they struggle. Yeah. I want to talk more about that when we come back. But before we go to break, I want to make sure you go see our sponsor, Extreme Power Sports, Jason Dyer and his group. Always a bunch of good folks to work with over there. If you're looking for an ATV, motorcycle, jet ski, anything like that, go see our friends over at Extreme Power Sport. We're going to take a break, and we'll be back in just a minute. She's ready. Extreme Power Sports, very own Polaris Razor Skylifter XP1000, Trinity Exhaust, Power Commander, 6-inch portals, Razor 3-5-inch to five inch lift, MSA 20-inch wheels wrapped with 35-inch BKTs, Deluxe Audio Roof, LED Light Bar, Mud Park Ready. We are ready to finance you on this Skylifter right now. Come check out all our off-road machines today at Extreme Power Sports. And welcome back into Track and Tigers. Coach, you talked about the captains holding the team together. 
anytime things start going south a little bit, and look, Auburn's four and two right now. They're still in the top 25. I mean, they, you know, they're not two and four. But anytime things start going a little south or perceived as going south, they start, there's rumbling. People start talking. Um, came across an article earlier this week on Auburn Undercover that surprised me a little bit. Brandon Marcella, who's a, a really noted writer, beat writer for Auburn, typically stays away from the, the, the drama and, and the, you know, the, the, the talk. He had some interesting things to say, quoted some, some, some people that had some things to say, of course, quoted them anonymous, anonymously. I want to read, read one of those. This is what Brandon wrote. Right or wrong, some players don't like Jared Stenham's happy-go-lucky attitude. He was smiling and skipping around outside the locker room after the game, prompting some parents and players to shake their heads and grumble. Stidham is disconnected from the team, save for a few close friends, and a lot of the defensive players are not happy with him. He shows leadership on game days, but the players don't see a killer instinct, and his words ring holler, holler to several offensive players, and it's, beginning, and, it's, and it's beginning to bother the defensive players from afar. Wow. Uh I don't know Brandon personally, but I, I have read most of his stuff that he does, and you, and that's not that's he usually don't write like that. I agree with yeah, you 100. Yeah. Uh, you don't know how much to uh, to believe or not believe uh, right now, but I mean if that be the case, uh, we we're in trouble, and yeah. uh, and they got to get that corrected, and uh, it be it's kind of hard for me to believe is. As much as Jarrett puts on himself and wants to try to do so good to be like that, uh, so hopefully they get that corrected. And uh, you know the strong leadership. You know we we we've got some coaches over there that can really relate to kids. And you know and Rodney Garner and uh, T. Wheel and and those guys. You know they'll get things together and. Uh, and, and hopefully that's not the case because, I mean, uh, you cannot if, – if that's the case and we're divided like that, uh, you, you're right. Uh, we could very easily have a six and six season. Yeah. Let me ask you, in your coaching career, did, y all, did you ever experience – I don't want any names or anything, but did you ever have stuff like that rise up from the team where you're, you're struggling a little bit and, and, and talk starts? And You're going to have that sometimes when one, one side of the ball is doing better than the other ones. Mm -hmm. But like I said, and we said last week, that's when your leadership has to take over. That's where your, your, all your coaches have to come forward. And, uh, and if you can do that and overcome that, <clears throat> then you, know, they, you can get it squashed. But uh, if you can't, it's just like cancer. It, it, just, it, run, it spreads very, very quick. Yeah, yeah. Talk about Stidham a little bit. Let's talk about his performance, not off the field, but on the field. He's completing about 57% of his passes. That's down 10 points from a year ago. Uh, you know, he was nearly 70% this time last year. Mm -hmm. This year just looks like a different quarterback. I mean, everybody wants to point to those two overthrown balls Saturday night, which I mean, were huge. And they weren't just overthrown. It looked like he was thrown into the, into the end zone. I went back and watched, uh, especially on the, on the reverse, and, and come back and throw. Uh, he's, he, he's, he threw off his back foot, yeah. and he, I, I saw the guy break loose on the, the linebacker that broke loose, uh, and, and, and really that we had nobody there to pick him up. You know, the, the action of the, of the speed sweep before we reversed it back, supposed to have kept him there. And, and it looked like Jarrett just, he just chucked and up. Yeah. And, uh, and that's when you got to be a man standing in there and, and get the ball. I mean, all you got to do in that situation is just throw the ball up in the air. Yeah. Let, him, let him run under it if he has to. He even has to stop to catch because there wasn't nobody there. Yeah. I mean, he didn't just miss. Yeah, I mean, I mean, and then, you know, um, the other overthrown ball, uh, are, you, are, you, are you alluding to the one in the end zone? Yeah. yeah. That was a little high, yeah. but after I went back and looked at it, if he throws a dart, the defensive man is in the middle. Mm -hmm. He might have had a chance to have get his hand. hand up. So he had to put a little air up under that. The thing was is that our receiver, he did everything right but keep his eyes on the ball. He was worried about keeping his foot in. And, um, and that's just, it, it's just one of those nights where everything that could go wrong did yeah. go wrong. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you, you say you make your breaks, and so we're just going to have to work and get better. Yeah. 
lost in the in 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 the in the you know the the, the terrible performance was that the second half the offense. Well, if you look at the numbers, they got a lot better in the second half. 225 yards of offense. Uh, Jared threw for 175 yards in the second half. It was just like you said, they missed opportunities. The offense did not play terrible in the second half. No, I mean, they take the first possession down and get a good drive done and, and, and got, a, got a penalty. Mm -hmm. uh, and then to the point where we had kicked field goal. Uh, the next possession is we drive it all the way down and, and Booby fumbles in the end zone. So that's the only two possessions we have in the third quarter. So we only had four, I believe, in the fourth quarter. Mm -hmm. And people say the result of, I saw an article about, you know, they had time of possession on us by... 42 minutes. By, by 42 minutes. And, it, yeah. and you say, well, it's, that goes back to the defense too now. Yeah. Because the defense, you know, they got to stop them and not let them drive the ball, even though we held and we've been with Doug Bryant, but you, you're letting them have so much more time. The third possession, we take it right back down again. I think that's when we missed a field goal. And uh, so, I mean, it's a situation where we just got to do the little things right uh, to, to make big things happen. Yeah. And, uh, and that's just not happening right now. As sure as the sun came up on Monday morning, we knew we were going to start reading about it. Things start going bad for Stidham. The talk shifts to Malik Willis. If you're the coach, at what point do you give him an opportunity? Well, number one, Jarrett's our quarterback. Mm -hmm. uh, unless he's lost total confidence of the team, uh, uh, some of this negative stuff that I'm that, that you you're talking about, unless that just really boils over, you stick with Jarrett. Uh, I know I read a couple articles that why don't we just go ahead and play Malik for the future because still ain't going to be back next year anyway. Well, who say that Jarrett's not going to be back next year? Uh, but, you know, right now, Jarrett is, is our quarterback. He's proven that through last year and this spring. He's got some mechanical flaws he's got to work on. He's got to quit throwing off his back foot. He's at best, when you looked at him last year, when he's standing tall and he's going, you know, going forward. But from his standpoint, too, now, we had a new right tackle, and uh, I think that Ashley kid, Calvin, he's going to probably be the best thing ever came out of Auburn, or could be. But he was like a, he was like put on an island Saturday, and it's he just couldn't do the job. His run blocking was very very good. His pro pass uh, protection, uh, it was it was not very good. The and it looks like Jack Driscoll could be gone again this week, the right tackle. And, and, and that's scary, but, I, but you know, but, but Calvin, but he tried hard. So you can, you can correct things that you, that you're, that you got effort on. And I, I really think that we put him in a situation where he could not be successful and he needed some help. And uh, we had to get, we, we got, we're going to have to get the, the fullback over there and let, let Cox help chip or some, or chip block him. You got to have something because that number nine, you know, you saw on the replay they, he's compared to uh, the Taylor uh, mm -hmm. linebacker for the Giants. Mm -hmm. I mean, you go his because if it's six foot six, two hundred fifty pound, you know, runs like a four seven. He's just and he was just too fast, and so that caused problems from Jarrett because when you're facing always that pressure coming from your from your eye side, not your backside, but your front side, and you see it, you have a tendency. To try to get rid of the ball too quick and not step up. So I mean, they know the problems. We just got to get them fixed and we got to get them corrected. But the main thing is, is just like I said, uh, Auburn's just got to stay together. All right, we're going to take a break. When we come back, I'm going to ask Coach to talk about the defensive side of the ball. For the first time this season, we're seeing some deficiencies there. I want to talk about what happened Saturday night. We'll take a break and we'll be back in just a minute. Razer XP has earned its place as the world's best-selling performance side-by-side. -side. Now, the off-road's most successful predator looks even hungrier. For 2019, Razer XPs are cut more aggressively. The chiseled muscular style, premium digital instruments, and wicked LED accents all hint at the heart of the animal within. 
Choose a Ride Command Edition with off-road worthy touchscreen that puts total control at your fingertips. Or grab a Dynamics Edition and discover the terrain dominating power of smart suspension. Extreme performance has never looked so good. Build your XP at PolarisRazor.com. And welcome back into Track and Tigers. Coach, let's go to the other side of the ball. Uh, not a typical Auburn defensive performance uh, Saturday night, I think. Uh, all of us are going to see Nick Fitzgerald in our, in our dreams for a few more weeks. It's, it seemed like they just he repeatedly ran the same play over and over. Um, we couldn't stop it or didn't adjust stopping it. Um, 195 yards rushing by a quarterback. Have you seen anything like that? Yeah, well, I have, but, I mean, you, you, have, you, know, you don't want to think it's going to ever happen to you. Uh, they came in with a game plan of going empty mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and then throwing the bubble screen. We kind of stopped that and kind of we had to get, you know, when they get everybody out like that, you've got to get your numbers out of the box. You know, just to have a chance because you don't want to be a situation where they had four over here and one over here, and you only got two over here. So you have to you you got to play the 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 game with a with a formation, and then when they bring bring the back back, most time when you bring him back, he's going to stop on that side of the quarterback, and then the flow is going to go that way. They brought him across the quarterback and then run the flow back this side. So we got a linebacker that's coming all the way across, and then they're running the the only thing they ran was uh, not the only thing, but the, the, their base play off that was the outside zone with the quarterback on with the with the, the the read option off of it. And when our linebacker would go back out, and we only had a one linebacker set, that's an automatic quarterback read. So Fitzgerald, when he saw that, and then you know they gave it to the back, and he would get some yards. So when that linebacker came back in to give us a two linebacker set. Uh, and then we and you got to be able to stop the outside zone because they're getting yardage on that. They got the numbers on you in there, and it's it's more like they you're blocking to one side, you're blocking the outside zone, but the other side is blocking the power for the quarterback. So the guard is wrapping around and getting on your one linebacker set. There's nobody there. And anytime you want to pick up four to five yards, what they did. They hurt Auburn so bad on first downs. And you say, well, what are you talking about? They always got that six and seven yards to where now. Second and short all the time. All the time. And if you're going to give Fitzgerald that six foot five, what, 240 pounds mm -hmm. and two downs, he's going to get four yards or the back. So it was, it was a frustrating night. Uh, I know Coach Steele and them saw that. And, uh, you know, uh, it, it could it would really help if we could have changed some things up and kept two linebackers inside. I thought we'd have had a better chance to stop that. Yes, yeah, so you're you're a coach, so you're you're sitting up in the press box watching this. We're all watching it, and I know you can't answer. You weren't there, but how hard is it to make that adjustment when you're seeing them do that over and over? Well, there's it's so many things that you're reading on the scouting reports because, you know, they didn't throw the football very much. Mm. They, after he threw the interception, they almost said. <laughs> We're not going to throw it anymore. We're just going to run this one play because we're having success with it. Uh, the thing that I, uh, that I was interested with hearing from Coach Steele is that a lot of times when that motion starts and, and, and you have a check when motion starts, by the way, you're going to play gap control a certain way. But when, it, when the motion started and then it came back the same way, I think gap integrity is what hurt us, is that we didn't take the certain gaps right. And uh, I think that's what he was frustrated Sunday night by listening to his press conference, that he was frustrated because not that it was busted plays, it was busted assignments on who had what gap. Uh, but uh, I, I trust me, I got tickled. Uh, he says, you know, we got on his main thing, he said, he says, you know, video is the greatest too. Because if you're robbing a bank and you got a video of it, you're a bank robber. Well, they know what they did wrong. And it's not a matter of you having to trust the coach. You see what you've done wrong. Right. You know, the, the old story that we used to have, the big eye in the sky, it don't lie. It don't lie. And uh, so they'll get that corrected because, I mean, they're a good staff and we've got good ball players. It's the same defense we had before we came to Mississippi State that I thought was ranked one of the top five defenses in the nation. Uh, we're still there. And uh, we just got to make some corrections. And uh, 
But uh, that was very disheartening to, to see a, a team run on Auburn like that because they hadn't done that in a long, long time. Staying on the field 42 of the 60 minutes didn't help either. No, in the, in the first half, the offense hurt that because of the fact they had a lot of three and outs. Uh, that didn't happen in the second half. It was just a matter of fact, our defense couldn't get off the field. So it works hand in hand. Yep. All right, let's turn to Tennessee. They're struggling, clearly. Jeremy Pruitt going through his first year, coming to Auburn, big road test for them. You look at the you look at the numbers. You look at you look at uh, both lines of scrimmage. Auburn's got a clear clear advantage on paper, 15 point favorite. But it worries you. Well, it, it does because until we qu quit doing making them little mistakes and 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 executing properly, you know we ought to be scared anytime we play anybody. And uh, to the to that point, so yeah, in Tennessee. Uh, you know Jerry Pruitt. I, I've, I've known Jeremy back when when he when he coached at Hoover. He was an assistant coach there, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, he he wants to beat Auburn worse. He wants to beat anybody on the schedule, and uh, and you know their backs are not against the wall because it's their first year. But they're not going good, and they've got some good coaches over there. And uh, you know they would that would be a feather in their cap to come into Jordan Hare and uh, to beat Auburn. So they're gonna be prepared. Uh, I just hope that we're going to have more athletes than they got yeah. and we can execute like we probably can. But like I said, it's, it's not – anybody thinks this thing's going to be a blow away. Uh, a lot of things got to happen and change for that to happen. Yeah, when I saw 15-point favorite, my first thought was I hope we can score 15 points. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think, that's a, I think a lot of Auburn fans think that, think that way right now. Uh, we, we, look, I, I'm trying to stay positive as I can yeah. and uh, to the point where – I think we're going to turn this thing around, and I think we're going to be a better football team. But it's going to take everybody, including the fans. Uh, you know, these these players, they, they're they 18, 19, 21-year-old kids. <clears throat> they read social media. So when they keep reading and, and hearing stuff and, 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 and they're getting bashed, that, that don't help things. So uh, Auburn's always been family. We've always been one that circle the wagons and, 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 and support. And... Uh, it's just stop all the negative stuff. Absolutely. The negative stuff can come after the season's over. But right now, we still got a football season to play. Absolutely. Interesting matchup with Tennessee when you look. Charles Kelly, who has a central connection. Me and Charlie go back a long ways. Uh, and was the longtime FSU defensive coordinator. Now he's coaching safeties and special teams at Tennessee. Mm -hmm. He's coming to town. Tracy Rocker, defensive line coach at Auburn, Auburn All-American. He's coming mm. back to town as their defensive line coach. Right. A lot of, a lot of good sub-stories going there. It Not is. to mention Pruitt being in the state for so yeah, many years. For, yeah, for, you know, Jeremy and, and, and coming back to the state. And uh, he's got, he know he's got a lot of friends here, and, and he'd like to look good. Uh, coach Kelly, uh, he worked with us back in the, in the 90s, and uh, just a, a class individual, did a great job at Georgia Tech, Florida State. Wherever he's been, he's done a good job, and glad to see him at, at Tennessee with Jeremy. Uh, coach Rocker, he's always been one of my favorites. Uh, player and coach when he, you know, he was there. So, like I said, it's a, it's a lot of turnover. But you know, when when that whistle blows and and, and that kicks is made, all that's going to be out the one. It's just be, it's going to be a matter of just trying to do what you got to do to give your team the best chance to win. Yeah, should be a lot of fun. Auburn welcomes Tennessee to Jordan Hare Stadium this Saturday at noon on the SEC Network. I hope everybody has a good weekend, and we'll see you next week.